What are Earth's processes that cause changes on Earth's surface? How do the changes take place? Earth's surface is formed by two processes, namely exogenic process and endogenic process. What is exogenic process and what is endogenic process? Let's learn in more detail. Exogenic process is the process that occurs on the Earth's surface. Examples of exogenic process are weathering, erosion, transport and sedimentation, and mass and land depletion. Weathering is a process of rock fragmentation and decomposition or decay due to changes in temperature, rainwater, frosting, and microorganisms. Changes in temperature cause rock to expand and contract. As this happens over and over again, the structure of the rock weakens. Over time, it crumbles. Rainwater naturally slightly acidic because carbon dioxide from the air dissolves in it. Minerals in rocks may react with the rainwater, causing the rock to be weathered. Microorganisms release acid-forming chemicals that cause weathering and also contribute to the breaking down of rocks and landforms. What is frosting? When water freezes to ice, its volume increases by 9%. When ice grows, it induces stress that breaks the rocks. The rocks that experience weathering will be broken into smaller fragments and become new materials such as soil. The second example of exogenic process is erosion. It is a process of eroding of Earth's surface by moving agents such as water, wind and waves. Wearing away occurs due to the kinetic energy and friction when the eroding agents move. Another example of exogenic process is transport and sedimentation. Weathered or corroded materials are moved by agents such as running water, wind, wave and glaciers. The materials will be sedimented when velocity of the agents decreases. As you can see, the sedimentary rock is formed when the corroded materials are sedimented when the velocity of water decreases. Another example of exogenic process is the mass and land depletion. This is a process of movement of soil, sand or rock debris down the slope due to gravitational force. Examples are landslide and mud flow. Next, let's look at the endogenic process. Endogenic process is caused by forces from within the Earth. It forms and changes the Earth's surface. Examples of endogenic process are mental convection process, Earth's crust movement, and magma activity. Recall back on what you have learned earlier about the Earth's layers. Earth consists of crust, mantle, and core. Mantle activity is the activities that occur around the mantle. The first example of endogenic process is the mantle convection process. The high temperature in the mantle and the core of the Earth produces convection currents in the asthenosphere layer. These currents are able to move Earth's crust. The second example of endogenic process is the Earth crust movement or plate tectonics. According to the theory of plate tectonics, the Earth's crust is divided into several pieces of plates. These plates constantly move resulting in collision and divergence, which produce various landforms on Earth and continental drifts. A convergent plate boundary is formed when tectonic plates collide. When two plates collide, they may cause rock to be thrust upward at the point of collision, resulting in mountain building. For example, the Himalayas were formed by the collisions of the 
Indo-Australian plate with Eurasian plate. A divergent boundary occurs when two tectonic plates move away from each other. Along these boundaries, earthquakes are common and magma rises from the Earth's mantle to the surface, solidifying to create new crusts. Third example of endogenic process is the magma activity. Volcano is a vent on the Earth's crust that allows molten and hot magma to flow out through it in a strong eruption. The erupted materials accumulate around the slope of the vent and form volcanic cones. Earth's surface is the only habitat available to the human race. Understanding the processes by which the habitat has been created and continually altered is important to determine the causes of environmental degradation to restore what is degraded and to guide policy decisions towards sustainable earth surface. That's all for today's lesson. Thank you.